the uh, basil has grown enough that I am going to make some pesto. And I just noticed some, it looks like caterpillar droppings. So after I pinch these, I'm going to dust these all with diatomaceous earth. Right now, I have a, all right, I have a, a nice bowl full of basil there, and I've pinched off all the tops of this. Let's see what I've thrown off. I pinched off all the tops of anything that was starting to flower, or of anything that had leaves that were eaten. This is the, the standard variety of basil. Oops, there's one I missed. This is the standard variety of basil, the Genovese, standard for making for making pesto. This is a little shorter variety here. It's a new improved variety called, I don't know, basil dolce or dulce, something like that. Um, it's kind of sweet basil. And I'm going to mix some of this in also. All right, I have everything pinched off now and ready for it to shoot up again without flowering. Just give you a quick glance at how tall the how tall the sweet corn is getting. Okay, now that I picked the basil to make pesto, and I also pinched it off so it won't flower, so it'll shoot out again. I have dusted it with food grade diatomaceous earth. And I'm hoping that will keep the caterpillars from nibbling on it and ruining it. Okay, and once I've picked the basil, I need to wash it. Uh, basil does not like cold temperatures. If you've ever noticed, if you put it in the refrigerator, it will turn black. Kind of the same thing if I wash it in cold water. So I will wash it with kind of warm water. And then I'll drain it in the drainer here and then uh, get the blender out. Okay, we are ready to make pesto. I have enough basil for two double batches, so I'll make one double batch at a time. Uh, first thing you need to do is gather your ingredients, so that's the extra basil there. There is, I'm gonna need only one of those little lemon cubes. Whenever I see lemons or limes on sale, I squeeze them, put them in, freeze them in ice cube trays, and then I put them in one of these jars. There's my, there are my toasted almonds. I'm gonna use avocado oil, instead of uh, olive oil. Sometimes the olive oil that I buy is a little bitter, just not that fresh. I'm safe with avocado oil and it's, it's actually really, really nice. And there's my three cups of fresh basil leaves that I've washed. And then here's my blender. Now let's go back over here again and see. So what I'm going to be using with the double batch is a half cup of almonds. I'm going to skip the garlic. You should put it in, but I'm not that big a garlic fan. I'm going to have three cups of fresh basil leaves. As you see, it says Genevieve's is, Genevieve's is best, and that's the kind of basil I have. I will use a cup of avocado oil. I use a quarter teaspoon of salt, one of those little lemon cubes. And I have some fresh Parmesan here that I'll use for the, the pesto that I'm not freezing. As far as how I use this, uh, it keeps in the freezer in these little, in these little canning jars here. This is what I freeze it in, one cup jars. It'll keep in the freezer for a good couple of years. I thaw just a little bit at a time when I need, and then I'll crinkle up wax paper and put it on top. I mostly use it with um, with scrambled eggs and with fried eggs. Also, I like to stir it into any Italian thing, so like I'll stir it into my spaghetti. Uh, of course, you can mix it with Greek yogurt I've got down here for salad dressing. It's really good that way, or just to eat it on pasta. Okay, what I'm going to try to do here is to turn it on and then to drizzle in the rest of the oil and then add the basil in. I forget from year to year exactly how I how I do this. Let's get this a try. Good Good Okay, now what I need to do, see what this looks like. Right now it's way too much oil. So now I'm gonna put the rest of the basil leaves in here, blend it up, and then that's all. That's, that's how easy it is to make it. I've got the rest of the basil leaves in there. I'll blend it up for you and show you what the finished product looks like. Those leaves I added in just wanted to sort of float to the top, so I turned it off, took the lid off, and I'm pushing them down here with the wooden spoon, see if I can get them mixed in a little bit better. Okay, except for that one stray leaf we got stuck there on the side that I'll just probably eat. We're good to go. And then I'm going to have to make another batch and then we will get it all frozen. I checked my canning and freezing list from last year to see how much pesto I made and it looks like a total of five jars. Look over here. That double batch of pesto made, made two jars, two one cup or they're called half pint jars. I label them on top. It says 19 pesto. Now I have another whole batch to make and it looks like I'm going to have to be buying some more avocado oil. 
I have a feeling I'm going to have far more than just five jars of pesto this year. Until next time, this is Lori Fichter. Uh, here's what a broccoli worm looks like close up, and there's its droppings, and uh, there's another one there. Let me turn it. The refrigerator has not killed them. Yeah, there's one hiding in there, too. So, this big bag of broccoli is getting thrown out.